All right, welcome back. So in the following four videos, we're going to talk about ratios to remember. Okay. And so we're going to start with balance sheet ratios. Then we're going to proceed to an income statement ratios in the following video, then overall efficiency ratios, and then we're going to move to specific efficiency ratios. Now you're probably asking like, why do we need to talk about these ratios anyhow? Because you want to make fair comparisons to your entrepreneurial venture or your small business to that of industry or market standards. Again, think about being a small restaurant owner. It is grossly unfair to compare your numbers without any sort of comparison to that of McDonald's. Okay? It's just not, it's not fair, right? McDonald's is a multi-billion dollar company. You are a small restaurant. Why would you even make that comparison? At least with you know uncon uncontextualized numbers. But if you use ratios, it's a good way to check to see how you're doing compared to other players in the industry and in the market. Because McDonald's will have these ratios too, and so will you. And therefore, you can see kind of how you're doing. So let's start off by looking at our balance sheet ratios. And these kind of go from more lenient to stricter. But the current ratio takes your current assets, so that's everything that your firm controls or has, your cash, um, you know, plants, as in production plants, not, I mean, I guess it could be a plant in a pot too, but that's really not what I had in mind. Inventory, you know, anything that that firm could sell and receive some sort of cash. You take that estimated amount and you divide it by the current liabilities. And this measures liquidity. In other words, if I had a current ratio of 1.5, that means for every dollar in liability, I have a dollar fifty with which to pay it. But let's say like, hey, you know, do I really gotta sell my plant to pay off my debt? And I'm not talking about the plant on my secretary's desk, I'm talking about like my manufacturing plant. You know, I, you know, I don't find that ratio very useful because I don't wanna, there's certain things I don't wanna sell, or right now I can't get rid of inventory. There's lots of reasons that you don't want to use your current ratio. So maybe you want to use the quick ratio, and that is liquidity. It measures liquidity. So there you take the cash, and you add the accounts receivable, and you divide it by the current liabilities. So if I have a quick ratio of 1.5, that tells me that the money that I have on hand right now, <clears throat> plus money that I'm waiting to receive from customers, if I take those two numbers uh, together, and I divide it by the current liabilities, and I have a number of 1.5, I have $1.50 between these two amounts of money, which this is real money and this is money we hope we're going to get, I have $1.50 between these two amounts to pay for every dollar that I owe. But of course, as I'm going to talk about in the final video in this playlist, accounts receivables are a nightmare because a lot of them don't get paid, you got to wait, it's not good. Maybe that's not the picture of the firm that you want to take right now. Maybe like right now, you're in a bad economy and you think you're not going to get most of your accounts receivable. So you take a stricter measure, and that's the cash ratio. And the cash ratio also measures liquidity, but in a more strict amount. You take the amount of cash that you have on hand, and you divide it by current liabilities. So in other words, if I have a cash ratio of 1.5, it means that for every dollar in liability that I have, I have $1.50 with which to pay it. Okay? And then the final one is debt to worth. And that is a way of measuring risk. You take your total liabilities and you divide it by the net worth. In other words, it measures the number of dollars of debt owed for every dollar of net worth. So let's say we're probably not going to have $1.50 again. Let's say that I've got a debt to worth ratio of $1.15. That means for every dollar in liability, or excuse me, for every dollar that I have invested in the firm, I owe $1.15 for every dollar that I have that I have invested in the firm. Okay? That's probably not a very good situation to be in, but it all depends on the context. Great. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below if, uh, if you have any questions. Our next video, we're going to talk about income statement ratios. I'll see you in the next video.